Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us continue our Lenten journey as we ask the Lord to favor us with his pardon for the times when we have sinned. You were sent to heal the contrite Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy. We pay to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family, O Lord, schooled always in good works. And so comfort them with your protection here as to lead them graciously to the gifts on high. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The people of Judah and the citizens of Jerusalem said, Come, let us contrive a plot against Jeremiah. It will not mean the loss of instruction from the priest, nor of counsel from the wise, nor of messages from the prophets. And so let us destroy him by his own tongue. Let us carefully note his every word. Heed me, O Lord, and listen to what my adversaries say. Must good be repaid with evil, that they should dig a pit to take my life? Remember that I stood before you to speak in their behalf, to turn away your wrath from them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. You will free me from the snare they set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Save me, O Lord. I hear the whispers of the crowd that frighten me from every side, as they consult together against me, plotting to take my life. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. But my trust is in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Save me, O Lord. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside by themselves and said to them on the way, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and scourged and crucified, and he will be raised on the third day. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee approached Jesus and with her sons and said to him, did him homage, wishing to ask for something. He said to her, what do you wish? She answered him, command that these two sons of mine sit, one at your right, the other at your left in your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, you do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I am going to drink? They said to him, we can. He replied, my chalice you will indeed drink, but to sit at my right hand and my left, this is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. 
but it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant, and who wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And dear friends, as we continue our Lenten journey, I want us to recall for a minute the Gospel of this past Sunday, the story of the Transfiguration, where the glory of the Lord shines forth. And this disclosure of the glory of the Lord is really meant to strengthen the disciples, Peter, James, and John in particular, to strengthen them to face what was in prospect, namely the devastating experience of his crucifixion. Then today in our gospel we find Jesus predicting his passion. This is the third time in the gospel of Matthew that he does so. And he does so this third time in a most detailed way. He says, the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes. They will condemn him to death and hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and scourged and crucified. And he will be raised on the third day. So certainly he puts before them the terror that's in prospect, but also the glory to follow it. And in the midst of this, this very, very solemn moment, a very interesting thing happens. The mother of the sons of Zebedee, James and John, come to him with a request. And the request really is for, his, for her two sons to be given a special place of privilege in the kingdom to come. Now this is the second time in the Gospels that we have this particular event. In the Gospel of Mark, where it also occurs, it's actually the sons themselves who make this rather bold request. And um, as it were to soften it, the evangelist Matthew has the mother doing it. Mothers, of course, are always solicitous of the well-being of their children. Mothers are particularly looking out for their sons. And that being the case, the Gospel of Matthew has the mother ask the question. But still, Jesus gets right to the point. The response is the same, whether the sons or the mother ask the question. The response is the same, and he asks them, can you drink the chalice that I am going to drink? The bitter cup he's about to drink. And of course, they respond in the, the affirmative. But he then goes on to say, well, my chalice you will indeed drink. But to sit at my right hand or my left, that's not mine to give, but to those for whom it has been prepared by my father. The historical reality is that James and John do indeed come to share that cup, that bitter cup, that chalice that the Lord speaks of. James, being the first of the twelve to be martyred, as is recorded in the twelfth chapter of the, of the Acts of the Apostles. John is the only one of the twelve who actually died a natural death, but not without some extreme hardship and suffering in his own life, leading also to his exile on the Isle of Patmos. So even though he did not die a martyr's death, he certainly lived a martyr's life. As we travel on our journey towards Easter, this, during this period of Lent then, the Gospel today reminds us that the suffering of the Lord is in prospect prior to his glorification and his resurrection. To remind us, of course, that it's a pattern for our lives as a whole. No enduring value is attained without effort. No great achievement really is accomplished without some measure of suffering. And no one of us, if we live any length of time, will be strangers to suffering. It's a negative, but of course, it's not the end of the story. The end of the story is that glorification of which Jesus spoke in his passion prediction today and which he disclosed to the disciples in his transfiguration. And that, of course, is, as it were, the comfort for all of us as we travel through the trials of life, and particularly as we do so during the season of Lent. And it is for that reason 
that what be reminded that while Lent is a serious time, it's not a sad time. It's a time for us to recognize that through suffering we pass to joy, through Lent we pass to Easter, through the Passion the Lord passed to his resurrection. And that, of course, is grace sufficient for us. Let us pray. Let us pray today for the church throughout the world that during this time of Lent we may indeed be serious about deepening our relationship to the Lord and deepening our commitment to sharing that love which is in our hearts with all those with whom we share this life. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Francis, our Pope, that he may continue to lead us after the manner of Christ, the Good Shepherd. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to remember all those whom we know and love who are recovering from illness, whether it be from infection of COVID-19 or some other illness, for their recovery, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray again for all those who are in need, that we may have the awareness and the sensitivity to their need and to reach out to them in their need. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now, in silence, we put our own personal needs before the Lord and ask the Lord to grant us his help as we face whatever challenges burden us most heavily at this moment. For all these things, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious Lord, we put ourselves before you this Lent and we ask that you keep us faithful to our own Lenten commitment and give us the grace to draw closer to you and deeper in our faith and with a deeper commitment and sensitivity to all our neighbors. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that have become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God, Christ. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God, Christ. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. Look with favor, Lord, on the sacrificial gifts we offer you, and by this holy exchange undo the bonds of our sins through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our it God. Is, it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that, freed from disordered affection, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your presence is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom, for our sake, you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought for us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread in his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, and confessing your mercy, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, with me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, St. Catherine, Drexel, and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue, who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Virtually, let us make an act of spiritual communion insofar as we're unable to physically partake in the reception of the Eucharist at this time. My Jesus, I believe that you are really present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I hunger to receive you. Since I cannot receive communion th at this moment, feed my soul at least spiritually, I unite myself wholly to you now as I do when I actually receive you. Permit me never to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord our God, that what you have given us as the pledge of immortality may work for our eternal salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bestow upon your servants, Lord, abundance of grace and protection. Grant health of mind and body. Grant fullness of fraternal charity and make us always devoted to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Uh,
thanks be to God. Dear friends, I wish you all a safe and wonderful day. And by safe, I mean practicing our safety protocols, social distancing when we are in crowds, wearing our face masks in public, and our frequent hand washing and hand sanitizing. Be safe. God bless you. Have a good day.